something I've noticed over the past couple of years is that in December, a percentage of the fish will start to hug the bottom, get more bottom oriented, and you can catch them on jigs, drop shots, stuff like that. I really would just like to get on some fish, get some bites, feel that tug at the end of the line, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, buddy, chokes the jig. Man, bite's pretty good today, guys. Gotta appreciate days like this. Man, they're eating the jig today. Man, man, they're loaded right here. You guys really want that jig, huh? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh God. All right, we got the Berryessa Slam. Man, this is one of those great days that makes all those tough days worth it. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you saw last video, man oh man, maybe one of the best jig bites we've had in a while, maybe all year. Fish, we're definitely munching the jig. We caught a bunch of quality and quantity. So today, what do they say? You don't leave fish to find fish. You don't leave a bite to find a bite. We're back at the same body of water and we've got our jig in hand. Now, just to give it some context, it is about five days later. We've had a lot of rain, which fingers crossed, we hope continues throughout California this winter. So a little bit different conditions will they still be biting the jig i'm hoping they do again we mentioned in the video before that the reason for coming out here and throwing a jig in the winter is that i personally tend to find a percentage of these fish more bottom oriented eating crawfish in the colder months a jig is just a better way to catch them a way to catch better quality so that's the rationale behind it we got the jig but as we know and learned many times before plans sometimes don't work out we're hoping they still do today and they're biting that jig so that's the video today guys another day out on the water to mix it up as we do every once in a while we will will be weighing our best five with the scale. We've got spotted bass, largemouth, and smallmouth in this body of water. Last time, predominantly catching spotted bass, and though they were some better quality, they don't get too heavy unless you catch those real magnums. I'd say, conservatively, our best five last time may have been 12 to 13 pounds, which to me is a heck of a bag for spotted bass, but we'll see today if we can replicate that, maybe do a little bit better. It is fishing, anything can happen, but only one way to find out, and that's to get out on the water and get a line wet. Kayaks in the back, about to pull down to the launch, get unloaded, and uh, we'll see what happens for another day of some winter bass fishing. Rig first. Beautiful day. You know, I do look forward to those spring days. They're up shallow. You power fish for them. You see them. There's something nice about a chilly, cool, minimal wind that is morning. There's a fish. Oh, that felt like a fish. Oh, he stripped me. Stripped me nude. Gosh. At least it's a jig bite. At least it's a jig bite. It's kind of holding my breath there a little bit, waiting for that first bite, just because, you know, bites change. I knew I'd feel a lot better as soon as we got one bite on the jig, just to confirm they're still eating it. I'm not saying they are. But I think that's a good sign. Last time we were targeting 
pretty much the same stuff throughout the day. Covering a lot of water and it's looking for steeper rock points, steeper bank, chunkier, bigger rocks. Seem to be what a lot of the jig fish were relating to. And again, I know there's probably like a massive swarm of fish offshore somewhere, but I like to catch them like this. It's cold. A little chilly. Man. Get out of that sun and temperature drops like 10 degrees. Oh, 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 that's much better. Man, you'd think this is just like prime jig territory. I mean, look at all these big boulders in the water. I think this is where they'd be, but also I'm not seeing anything on the graph either. Last time we were seeing them too, not just catching them. We had a really good day for the first half of the day, but what made it good to fantastic last time was we ran across a stretch, like a 50, 60 yard stretch that we caught a bunch of them on. And that's really what made the day fantastic. A little slow, almost nine o'clock and not a single fish in the boat yet. Maybe one bite. Alrighty. Not panicking yet, but we did just jam to the spot where we caught a bunch of fish last time. I don't know, it's kind of odd. I mean, we've had some storms, like I said, rain. The lake has actually risen about an inch from last night even, so I might just not be fishing the right depth. These fish may have shifted deeper, maybe even shallower. Last time we were catching them about 20, 25 foot. I don't know, clearly something I'm missing. There we go. Okay, that's a good sign. At least one still here. Feels good. Oh, some other spots. Wait. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good one. Not bad. All right, finally skunk out of the boat. I get to weigh at least one. Probably two and change, I'd say. Not good at guesstimating the weight of spotted bass. 196. All right. Number one. And I hope they're still here. the jig down. Oh, look, he went to check out the jig. You can see him literally go down to the jig. Just didn't need it. Oh, I love that thump. That's why I love a jig bite. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I should have boat flipped that one. Oh. That's a nice one. Dang. A smally? Oh, a little hybrid. That is such a fun bite. That little thump. Just cannot beat it. That's gotta be two and a half, I'd say. Two twenty-seven. It's a pretty one. That is a pretty one. Right back down. Oh, there's a couple of fish below us too. Probably shouldn't have boat flipped that one. There's a couple still here. Both bites were the same though. After we hop that jig, it's that thump. And you get to swing back and usually that initial swing will tell you if you got a giant or not. Or just like a regular one. We've caught so far, we're in about 20. Just oh my god, 20 just oh. I think you guys probably saw that. That fish followed that jig right up, and that was definitely another bass. Oh my goodness, it's 
the fish. Oh, ooh, he's pulling back. That's one of those hook sets. It might be a large mouth, actually. It is. Oh, yeah, they always want to jump, those largies. Momentum. Nice. I was going to say, if we want to get 15 pounds today, spots are fine for kayak tournaments, but I think for the boat tournaments, you really need those large mouth to get some, get some meat to your bag. Two seventy one, all right. There's a nice one right there. They might be shallower. Kind of zigged and zagged between thirty and did I just throw a jig out without a trailer on it? I think I did. <laughs> like I was saying, I've been zigging and zagging through thirty to ten foot. Once we got in like ten to fifteen foot, that's the most activity we've seen on the graph, so that might mean these fish moved up a little bit. Which, in theory, would make sense with rising water. This particular bank was pretty stacked, though, last time, too. So maybe they're just relating to the particular area as well. Keep going. Number three. Yeah, they're still here. Feels like a real small one, though. Wow, he's real small. A little smally. He'd be borderline, but our rule for uh, borderline fish is uh, can't weigh them. Can't score them if they're borderline. I am tempted to pick up a different bait, like an A-Rig or crankbait, something else, but I did experiment with some other baits last time we fished this section and didn't get bit. Granted, I didn't put a ton of time into them, but the jig was just seemingly the most productive bait. And once you start catching fish on a certain bait and get confidence with it, it's like a mental game. It's hard to throw something else. Mushy. Definite keeper smallmouth. Number four. Two eighteen. Nice. Oh, we got the slam too. Spot, largemouth, and smallmouth. Man. Just like we said in the previous video, this place has been so hit or miss for us and mainly miss in the fall and just because it's hard to target them. All the fish are, or a lot of fish are offshore chasing bait, but it's just, you know, it's a matter of what they're doing. <laughs> Obviously, once they've come up and gotten on the bank a little shallower, just so much easier to catch. Make another pass. I think the first stretch of this bank we were fishing maybe a little too deep. Seems like they're a little bit shallower today, so we'll make another pass and fish shallower. Oh god, they stole my trailer. I can already feel the weight difference. Stinker. fish as always you can see the fish follows it down there we go it kind of feels like a large mouth Let's say the first and the fifth are the hardest to catch. Got them both out of the way. A little meat to them. A little belly. I got a little belly shirt on them. The 
my skin is all goofed up. What the heck? What the heck's going on here? Oh my god. What the heck? My scale changed. Okay, that's weird. The scale like glitched. All my weights are different now. I know we had like 912 and now it's saying we have 414. Everything's like off. <sighs> that is so weird. The scale has never done that before. All the weights changed. Well, unless our scale somehow magically uh, fixes itself, I don't think we'll be weighing these fish. Any new batteries maybe? That is so weird. It literally changed all the weights of the fish. So much for weighing our best five today. Whatever. Let's keep fishing. It's so weird. Oh, you know what we did? I'm stupid. We changed it to kilograms. That's what happened. How did I change? Oh my god, I figured out the problem. What did I press to change it to kilograms? Alright, it still works. I just changed everything to different units. I was wondering. I was like, what the heck? I didn't even know I had a kilogram thing. I have no clue how I changed that. Well, at least we know we still got a functioning scale. I was thinking that's really weird. There we go. think that'll call. A couple down with it. Look at that. Got a couple of friends with him. Let's see if we can get one of his friends. They're looking at it. I can clearly see him looking at it. It's like I baited that one to bite. I just like had a sense there was a fish near it. Ooh. I thought one of his friends bit. jig back. Dang it. Felt like there was some play with that when I lifted the rod up. Like if you're stuck it'll just kind of pull back and be set there but when there's a fish you'll kind of lift up and feel like you're pulling something and that felt like I was pulling something. So hook sets are free. Just uh, came up empty handed with that one. What's up with that deer? Just been sitting in that same spot right in like <laughs> right in the water i don't know what he's doing it's a little one he's literally just been standing right there i don't know what he's doing How are they not eating it? It's the most obvious bite. Getting a bunch of bites here. Oh, there we go. Finally got a bite. Good spot. I think that might be the first call of the day. Yeah. Oh, that 
back, huh? Well, I gotta get rid of in kilograms. Still gotta figure out how to change this back to pounds. I don't know if that's gonna call. Point eight four. I gotta get rid of a point eight nine. It does not call. Okay. It's okay. No worries. At least it's a bite. A bite that actually got in the boat. All right, thanks to Google, I think we got the Google magic. It's not very intuitive. I guess when you turn this thing on, when it flashes once, you have to press the power button again to change the pounds. All right, so we're back in business now. We have 11.19 pounds. Have yet to call up, and we gotta get rid of a 196. Everything else is over two pounds, so not a bad day so far. Bite seems to have slowed down. The same thing happened last time. We had a really good bite window from about 10 to 11.30, and then after 11.30, the bite got tough. And I'm not sure if they just weren't eating or if they maybe just moved out a little deeper. I don't know, but we'll keep plugging away. We have a little more time today than we did the other day, so hopefully we'll get a few more opportunities and run across a few more patches of fish. was my fault. I've been using the same dang jig without retying for like 20 fish in a row. <laughs> that was gonna happen no matter what. My fault. Rookie mistake. God, why am I not getting these fish? That's just like funny, like past hour or so, the bite has been off. Meaning they're biting it, they're just not swallowing it, they're spitting it or something. There's a fish. Golly! Bite is a lot more subtle. It's a good spot too. Give some call. Call. Hey, buddy. Oh, he's spitting up a ton of bait. Actually, he might have just spit up a crawfish. I heard him throw up. And then we saw the remnants. Man, I don't know if that's going to call. It's going to be close. If it calls, it's not going to be much. Nope. 178. Again, that is going to be the trouble with these spots. I mean, they're fun to catch, no doubt. Just probably so many of them. Majority of them will be in that pound and a half range. Pound, well, pound and a three quarter range, too. Maybe even two pounds. It's just like, you know, three plus pounders are the ones that'll be really hard to catch. Certainly could happen, though. Two biggest spotted bass that I've ever caught in my life came out of Berryessa this past year. They were only probably four and change, but really pretty fish. so big when you set the hook though. Yes they do. Every hook set. You swear it's like a three pounder. Man, where all the big ones go? 
What do I got to do to get a bigger bite? Ah, man, that's the question. Like, what do we got to do to get a bigger bite? Like, I feel like the jig's a great way to get a big bite. I don't know. Can we fish it deeper? Shallower? I mean, should we change up baits? It's just hard to say. Especially when you're getting, I mean, the bites slow down, but we're, we're still getting bites every, you know, 30 minutes or so. And you just feel like eventually you'll get a good one. Man. It's funny, you look up there where the water line used to be and was at certain points and just imagine all that good structure, like the rocks and trees, all those amazing hiding ambush points, even places for them to spawn on, I suppose. It's crazy. Maybe the water will get back up there someday. In the meantime, I got a fish. This one feels good. I think. I think. Felt like the. Ooh, it is good. It is good. Come on. This is gonna help the cause. This will definitely call. This will definitely call. Yeah, that should call. That should call. Gotta be over two pounds, and we gotta get rid of a what a 196. Gotta be. Gotta be over two pounds. Barely 202. Well, we got everything over two pounds at least. <laughs> and even a two pounder, you swing on them, they feel so big. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for our day, our best five challenge again. Today we tried to replicate the trip we had last time, which was that jig bite, a very great jig bite, mind you. And today, you know, things could have gone either way, I suppose. It wasn't as good as last time, but they still were eating the jig. Had to kind of wait a little while, which was interesting. First thing in the morning, we picked up that jig. Conditions look very similar. The water, again, a little bit higher than last time. We've been getting some rain, some storms. So if anything, I thought that might help the jig bite and first hour or so just nothing we had one bite stole our trailer but it was relatively early on in the day thought that'd be a good sign and then just went about an hour without a bite covered some water tried some other places and ultimately what happened was we went to the one spot that we caught a lot of fish last time on a jig this 50 60 yard stretch and luckily they were still there they were biting the jig and we were able to get three or four pretty quickly we grinded it out on that spot made a few more passes got four and five so a nice little limit and it's funny because almost I identical to last time there was that window of time that like hour and a half two hour window 9 30 to 11 30 roughly where it seemed like the bite was really on like they were just biting they were active there was a good concentration of fish up shallow today they seem to be a little bit shallower 10 to 15 and then after that window it just kind of died off you weren't even seeing them on the graph i don't know if they just went out deeper maybe even just hunkered closer to the bottom but after that the bite kind of died down and we really had to work for the fish you know we had to cover a lot of water still catching them on points 15 to 20 foot on that jig we did try a few other things today the a rig even some finesse but like i said today when you're getting bit on the jig it's hard to put it down so we pretty much kept that locked in our hand all day picked up a few more fish i think we culled up once and our final weight best five today i don't know if you can see it was 11.26. So not a terrible day. I think I said I had about 11, 12 pounds last time. Probably a similar day as it was last time. Hey, a limit in the winter time on a jig. I will certainly take it, but that is going to do it for our day out on the water. Another successful one. Man, oh man, I don't know how I'm gonna go back to the Delta after catching fish like this, but who knows? I'm sure we'll mix it up plenty this winter. But as always, I thank you guys for watching, for coming along. And I'll see you guys in the next video.